Okay, so then the last question out of the grouping going over kind of algebra skills is to go over a very important thing on the SAT they try and trick you on constantly. Now, to do this problem, I'll first let them do it the long way. And if you do it the long way, you're going to square both sides and you're going to get x plus 2 equals x squared. Now at this point, I introduce another important SAT strategy for the first time. I say if you ever see something squared, like x squared on the SAT or just in math class, it has to be so obvious that you need a factor that it's like you got hit with a flashbang grenade. So then I'll kind of fake throw a grenade and make the little sound or whatever. And, and from now on, hopefully they always know when they see something squared that they need a factor. So from this point, I tell them, well, hey, to factor, you got to set it equal to zero. And then you will factor it, of course, and they'll get that x equals negative 1 and 2. Okay, well, then they'll pick answer choice A and feel very confident about it for good reason. But then I'll emphasize, well, no, it's a trap. So this is where we write on the reference sheets that radical problems have only one solution. So... In fact, I tell them that I almost never actually solve a radical problem on the SAT. Um, for example, I look at this problem and immediately know that A is out and so is D. Radical problems can only have one solution. So then I'll tell them, just plug in the answer choices on radical problems. Because like, take B for example, plug it in. If it works, you're done. If it doesn't work, you're still done because there's only one other answer available. So it would have to be that one. Um, so then we, we plug in negative 1, and, and that would be the square root of 1 equals negative negative 1, which would be 1 equals 1. That checks, and so the answer must be B. And just to demonstrate that 2 wouldn't work, that would be square root of 4 equals negative 2. 2 does not equal negative 2, so C is out as well. So again, then I'll even mess around with the student, and I'll be like, okay, so radical problems have one solution, except for... If on both sides, the terms under the radical are the same, then it's no solution, right? And they'll be like, yeah. And they'll be like, no, don't fall for the trap. It's only one solution. And then I'll be like, okay, but they could be infinite solutions, right? And they'll be like, maybe. And I'll be like, no, it's only one solution. I really, really try and emphasize this because they try and trick you with it on almost every SAT. There's only one solution on a radical problem. And then lastly, I'll really emphasize that so what is a radical problem when I say that? Well, it's any equation that has a radical in it anywhere at the beginning of the problem.